Hello everyone, this is Jan here, and I would like to take you on a trip through our solar system. We are starting our journey far, far away from Earth. In fact, all of the living lights you see are not stars, they are whole galaxies. Traveling with several million light years per second, we finally arrive at our home, the Milky Way. Around halfway from the center of our galaxy, there she is, our Sun. The main sequence star of the type G2V, roughly 4.57 billion years old, which is fusing 564 million tons hydrogen into 560 tons of helium every single second of its lifetime. To put that into perspective, that's roughly 20,000 times the total energy consumption since the beginning of the industrialization. In other words, that's more energy per second than all existing nuclear power plants combined could produce in 750,000 years. That's a whole lot of energy. Rising out of the solar eclipse, we come to our innermost planet Mercury. Mercury's atmosphere consists of roughly 42% of oxygen. But don't be fooled, even if you landed there you would have a hard time breathing, since its atmosphere is thinner than a lab made vacuum on Earth. The average temperature of 167 degrees centigrade would also make living there pretty hard. One of the most interesting things though about Mercury is its orbit around the Sun. With the highest eccentricity of all planets in the solar system, its apoapsis is 69.8 million kilometers away from the Sun and its periapsis lies at only 46 million kilometers. That makes it the most elliptic orbit of all the planets. Next on our list we have Venus. Venus is probably the most similar planet to Earth in our system, in terms of diameter, mass and average density. It is also the second most visible object in the sky, only outshined by the moon. Venus' atmosphere consists of almost only CO2 with 96%. Since its atmosphere is so thick, the average pressure is 90 times higher than on Earth. That makes it near impossible to see more than just clouds when observing it with a telescope. To explore its atmosphere and surface, the Soviets launched the Venera missions from 1961 to 1983. The most astounding thing for me was that they didn't even need parachutes on the landing. The thickness of the atmosphere and a little bit of RCS were enough to make for a smooth landing. Oh, by the way, it's also super hot. And here we are, the only known planet in the entire universe where life has officially been reported to be seen. I'm of course talking about our beautiful marvel in space, planet Earth. With an average distance of around 149 million kilometers, Earth holds its place at the third position from the Sun in our solar system. 70.7% of Earth's surface is covered in water, which would in fact make us all little islanders. And there we are, floating above the clouds, and in the distance we can even see the Aurora Borealis, where electrically charged particles from the sun come streaming and smash into the upper atmosphere around the poles, ionize and become light which we can then see. And Earth is not the only planet where this phenomenon happens. You can find pictures of it on the internet when you search for Aurora and Saturn. Moving on to our next entry, we have Mars closely orbited by Phobos and Deimos, which is Greek for fear and horror. Though I don't think you should fear them at all since they are bound to their parent planet and will most likely not crash into Earth in the near future. If you landed on Mars you would feel 63% less gravity than on Earth, that's also a little bit more than twice as much as our moon has. Even though gravity might not be a huge issue when going to Mars, the atmosphere may. It's only 0.63% as thick as the Earth's and consists of mostly CO2. Water does therefore almost immediately evaporate and is only liquid over a short period of times in lower areas. But still, there is water, which is pretty cool, since it's widely accepted that water is a must-be for life as we know it. And there we have it, our first gas giant, Jupiter. He's the biggest planet in our solar system and he doesn't come alone. In fact, there are 67 known moons which are orbiting around him, Ganymede being the biggest closely followed by Callisto, Io and Europa. If you watch closely, you can even see his small rings. Yes, Saturn is not the only planet with a ring system, though the rings of Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune are mostly not visible. 
His total mass is 2.5 times higher than all of the other planets combined. In the night sky, Jupiter is easily observable by being the third brightest object in the sky, only overshined by the Moon and Venus. Therefore, you don't even need a telescope to see him. Jupiter consists mostly of hydrogen, helium and other gases, though through sheer force of pressure he might have a solid core. By the way, if Jupiter would have around 80 times its mass, he would in fact start fusing hydrogen and could therefore be called a star. But I doubt that will ever happen in our lifetime. Next on the list we have Saturn and its famous rings. It is estimated that there are over 100,000 individual rings around the planet, starting at 7,000 kilometers above surface till up to 960,000 kilometers. The gaps between the rings are due to the gravitational interaction between Saturn and its moons. Consisting of billions of tiny little pieces of dust, ice and other particles, the inner rings orbit the planet every 6 to 8 hours, while the outer ones need 12 to 16, so you could say that they are reasonable fast. Only outdone by Jupiter, Saturn has 62 moons, including Titan, which is the second biggest moon in the solar system, just after Ganymede. Due to its low density, you would feel almost the same gravity as on Earth, if you were trying to land there, which by the way is not really possible since it's made out of gas. Its main components are hydrogen, helium, methane and other gases. Due to its size, Saturn is the outermost planet which can still be seen with your bare eyes. That's also the reason why it was discovered very early on in history and was even known as the outermost planet from the five planets of the antique sky. Our next stop brings us to a distance of about 2.9 billion kilometers away from the Sun. We are now looking at Uranus, the first gas planet which is also an ice giant. Ice giants generally contain way less hydrogen and helium in mass than gas giants do, but at the same time they consist of heavier elements such as oxygen, carbon and nitrogen. That would allow the planets to have huge reservoirs of water and ice inside them. Even though the core is as hot as 5000 degrees centigrade, Ice can still form there because of huge amounts of pressure which are sitting at around 8 million bar or 160 million psi. And yes, water behaves pretty weird sometimes. While the general constant is that water will boil at 100 degrees centigrade, that's not really true. It really depends on the pressure, therefore water will boil at only 71 degrees centigrade on top of Mount Everest. It also works in the other direction though. The higher the pressure, the harder it gets for the water to boil. So if you were at a depth of 2.25 kilometers underwater, the water would still not boil at around 370 degrees centigrade. Now back to Uranus. Uranus has 27 moons between 10 and 1600 kilo kilometers in diameter. It also has greenish rings, which are really hard to see. It's so hard actually that the last two rings, the outermost ones, were just detected by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2005. Now off to the last planet in our solar system. Neptune is similar to Uranus and ice giant. Because of its very fast rotation period of around 16 hours, its diameter around the equator is around 1000 kilometers wider than the diameter around the pole. Even though it is smaller than Uranus, Neptune does have more mass because of its higher density. This also makes it the densest out of all gas planets in our solar system. Because of the huge distance from our Sun, Neptune only travels with a velocity of 5.43 km per second. Both these stats combined are leading to the fact that a year on Neptune would take 165 Earth years in total. Neptune, much like Uranus, is mainly made out of hydrogen and helium for the upper layer, water, ammonia and methane for the inner structure and rock and ice for the core. Anyway, despite its looks, Neptune is quite hostile. Not only because there is no surface to live on, but also because of the weather. Yes, storms on Neptune can reach speeds of up to 2100 km per hour. I certainly wouldn't want to drive through that. An honorable mention for Pluto. Even though there are now bigger dwarf planets found than Pluto, I will still carry him in my heart. So here's a quick flyby. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
If you have any questions regarding the material, please comment down below. I hope I see you soon. Goodbye.